Okay, next let's get into data communications. And so data communication refers to different ways that a PLC microprocessor based system talks to each other and to other devices. The two general types of communication links that can be established between the PLC and other devices are point to point and network links. So you can be thinking about those possibilities and what might be what you're seeing. Your so um, you can be thinking of a point to point serial communication links and um, you're seeing that played out in this figure here. Um, a local area ne network or LAN is a system that interconnects data communication components within a limited area. So everything just connects to this fabric. And so that would be a possibility. Transmission media are the cable through which data and control signals flow on a network. So the transmission media includes coax cable, twisted pairs, or fiber optics. Um, for wireless, you can have Wi-Fi internet networks such as DF1 radio modem, communications through radio waves. All of those are within the realm of possibility. The level of functionality of industrial networks. Here we're just seeing some examples, device level, control level, information level. Um, it, and the device level involves various sensors and actuator devices of machines and processes. These may include devices such as sensors, switches, drives, motors, and valves. The control level is the level that the network industrial controllers are on. This level may include controllers such as PLCs and robot controllers. And then at the information level is a plant-wide network typically composed of the company's business networks and computers. This level may include scheduling, sales, management, and corporate-wide information. Each device connects, connected on, on a network is known as a node or station. As signals travel along a network cable, they degrade and become distorted in a process that is called attenuation. A repeater is a device that amplifies a signal to its original strength in order to enable its signals to travel further. Network topology is the physical layout of devices on a network formed by the network cable when modes are attached. The star topology uses a network controller switch or hub to connect to several PLC network nodes. Bus topology is a configuration in which all stations are connected in parallel and receive information from every other station. IO bus networks can be divided into device bus networks and process bus. Um, a device bus network interface with lower level information devices such as push buttons and limit switches that primarily transmit data relating to the on off status of the device and its operating status. Device bus networks that include discrete devices as well as small analog devices are called byte wide bus networks. Process but networks are capable of communicating several hundred bytes of data per transmission. The, the majority of devices used in process bus networks are analog. Process bus networks connect with high level information devices just as smart processes, um, valves and flow meters. A protocol is a set of rules that two or more devices must follow if they are to communicate with each other. And so here is just an illustration of um, how that could be mapped out in an industrial environment. Gateways make communication possible between different architectures and protocols. And so you need to have a translator that's um, proficient in, in both quote languages, if you will. And gate, gateways change the format of the message so it will conform to the application program at the receiving end of the, the transfer. A bus topology network requires some method of controlling a particular device's access to the bus. Access control prevents the occurrence of more than one message on the network at a time. In a token passing network, a, a node can transmit data on the network only when it has possession of a token. When a node finished, finishes transmitting messages, it sends a special message to the next node in a sequence granted it the, the token. Ethernet networks use a collision detection access control scheme. Nodes listen for activity on the network and transmit only if there are no other messages on the network. If a collision is detected, each node that has sent out a message will wait a random amount of time and will resend its data if it does not detect any network activity. 
The access method most often used in server client protocoling is polling. The server controller controls all communication originating from the controls. Um, the, the server control sends data to the clients. When the server needs data from a client, it will pull the clients and wait for a response. You can also have peer-to-peer -peer networks that have a distributed means of control. Certain peer-to-peer -peer networks use a token passing method access um, each device has the ability to request use of and then take control of the network for the purpose of transmitting information to or requesting information from other network devices. There are two methods for transmitting PLC digital data, either parallel or serial. The um, illustration here shows parallel. Um, so all these lines go in, in at the same time between devices. Here we're seeing an example of a um, serial. You can think of a, a universal ser um, serial bus, USB. That's an example of something that's gotten to be quite common. You can have duplex communication that allows for communication in both directions or half duplex, where you can only go one at a time. And so you can either have half duplex or full duplex. Um, um, half duplex is you have a one dedicated line Full duplex means you have two dedicated uh, ways of communicating at the same time. You can have different um, networking schemes that replace traditional point-to-point -point hardware hard wiring. And so this gets into some of the more advanced sophistications that are available. So that can be um, a useful thing. Um, and then there's other types of ways. A device net is a... Um, Network control of systems minimizes the amount of wiring that needs to be done. And so this is how everything's hooked up to that bus, if you will. And so for a data highway network, um, so for the Allen Bradley data highway, this is an example of a proprietary network that's um, vendor unique. They use a peer to peer communication. And the, the medium is, is shielded with um, twisted, twisted pair cable. Um, so you can also have standards like RS-232, RS-422, or RS-485. So, and there are some limitations to how long um, cables can be. Uh, we already talked about the device net network. It's an open device level network that's, that's available out there. Um, the function of a device net Network, the function is to communicate information with as well as supply power to the field devices. The PLC drives the field devices directly with the use of a network scanner instead of IO modules. You can also have some other things here. So um, you can have device net and CIP. So CIP stands for Common Industrial Protocol. Communication data is carried over two wires with a second pair of wires carrying power. Um, you can have intelligence and diagnostic information. The field devices that are connected to the device in that network contain intelligence in the form of microprocessors or other circuits. These devices can communicate not only the on and off status, but also diagnostic information about the operating state. So um, the control net is, a, is an open high-speed network that is highly deterministic and repeatable. And determinism is the ability to reliably predict when data will be delivered and repeatability ensures that the transmit times are constant and unaffected by device connection, connecting to or leaving the network. You can have um, redundant medial um, type of um, things as, as well. And so this is something that you might encounter. I'm sorry, redundant media. Uh, um, and so this is something that, that can be available that you might encounter in the future. Um, Ethernet, um, this is a common internet protocol and you may have this type of um, connectivity for communication with the systems that you'll be using, at least in some some um, areas. So it is a shared common application um, layer between various things, control net, device net, and ethernet IP, provide a standardized full duplex operation, and it also allows interoperability. All those are a useful feature. 
So there's a variety of other things. We have the, the Modbus network is a serial communication protocol originally developed by Modicon for use with its PLCs. I'm just going to kind of do the highlights on these. You have the field bus network is an open serial two-way communication system that interconnects measurements and control equipment, such as sensors, actuators, and controllers. The Profis DB network is a functionally comparable to DeviceNet. Circos is an internationally approved communication standard for motion control. Heart is an open server client communication protocol developed to communicate with smart field devices. And this is just a little bit more information about Heart, the Heart signals. Um, you can pause the video and look over this if you'd like. We have supervisory control and data acquisition, SCADA. And so in some applications, in addition to a normal control function, the PLC is responsible for collecting data, performing the necessary processing, and structuring the data for, for generating reports. SCADA is a good example. The, the data collection is simplified by using a SCADA, SCADA, a supervisory control and data acquisition system. In general, a SCADA system usually refers to a, a system that coordinates but does not control processes in real time. So those are what, what the focus is. A typical SCADA system, independent PLCs perform IO control functions on, on field devices while being supervised by a SCADA slash HMI software package running on a host computer. Process control operators monitor PLC operations on the host computer and send control commands to the PLC if required. Um, an alarm is an announcement to the operator initiated by the process variable passing a defined limit as, a, as it approached an undesirable or unsafe value. Announcements include audible sounds, visual indicators, and messages. So those are be one of the things that a SCADA could be producing. Here is a factory talk device-based alarm instruction, what that could look like. Um, you could read in the textbook for more information about that. And so you have the factory talk device-based and the, here is a factory talk tag-based alarm instructions. All right, thank you very much.